Hello there, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and in this video I would like to talk about a very handy Linux command called T. I have the man page pulled up here, and we're not going to go too deeply into the actual man page, but I just have it pulled up so you see what it looks like and to read the description of the command. T. Read from standard input and write to standard output and files. Now, looking at that, you may ask, well, what what's so special about it? Reads from input, writes to output. So isn't there a lot of different ways to do that? And yes, there is. What's special about T though is this and here. It actually will do both. So what T will allow you to do is it will allow you to set up pipelines where at certain stages within the pipeline your data gets written to a file and also passed along to the next step of the pipeline. It lets you do both. You can think of it as a way of extracting a snapshot of the contents of your pipeline out of the middle of the pipeline. If that makes no sense, fear not. I have some examples for you. So hopefully by example, you'll start to see how this thing is useful. Now, to begin with, I have put together this file here and we're gonna see more about this file later, but it's called primes, blah, blah, blah. And all that this file contains is it contains a bunch of program run times in milliseconds. Uh, there are, or in seconds rather. There's about 1,000 file. there's not about, there's exactly 1,000 lines in this file. And let's use some pipelining to process this. And as we go through this, we'll see T in action. Now to begin with, we'll get the data into the pipeline by using cat. Uh, you could of course use an input redirect as well, but I like using cat as the beginning of my pipelines for, for, or the beginning of my pipelines where data files are concerned. Cat, of course, is going to accept files as arguments and will write the contents of those files to standard output. So now that we're writing that data to standard output, uh, let's go ahead and use unique to extract out all of the duplicate records. So we only have um, unique values. Now. Unique will only work if you sort the data first. So we're gonna sort the data. Tac n means we're gonna sort it numerically. And this is just gonna take all of our thousand records and put them in um, ascending order with the biggest at the bottom and the smallest at the top. And once it's sorted, we can then pipe it into unique to extract out all of the, the duplicate lines. And we can go ahead and say like a WC tac L to calculate how many individual unique values we have. And as you can see, we have 34 unique times. Whereas our, um, our actual file here contains 1000 lines. So 1000 lines of which only 34 of the values are unique. Now, if we take a look at this pipeline here, what if we want to calculate this WC tac L, but we also want to extract the um, we want to extract the listing of the unique values out of this pipeline as well. Well, in principle, I could just say, okay, well, well, we can do this. There's all our unique values, so let's write those to a file called say unique dot dat, and then I can use WC on unique dot dat to get the line count. I mean, that is one option, but if we would rather use one, one command to do both of those tasks, we can. This is where T comes in. If I would say pipe T, not tree, T, unique dot dat, and then WC tack L like this, what this is going to do is it will take the output of unique, T is going to write that data to a file and also pass it into word count. So if we look at this, you'll see we see 34, so the, the pipeline gives us the number that we're looking for. And we also have our unique dot dat file. As you can see, we have our data, all 34 lines of it. Another example, what if I wanted to grab the 10 largest unique values and then calculate the average of them? Well, again, I can do the same thing, sort it unique tail is going to give me just the, the bottom 10, right? Which in this case are going to be the 10 largest. And then I wrote a little Python program called mean, which is going to calculate the mean. 
this isn't a standard Linux utility. This is something I wrote myself. And there we go. There is the average value. And I can I can use T again to say, well, what if I want to see what if I want a file containing the numbers I'm taking the average of? Well, T um, biggest dot dat, I guess, like this. So as you can see, we get our mean just the same. And we also have the 10 numbers that I used for that average in a file. Now, one place where I'm using T is in this prime test.sh script that I have here. Uh, this is part of a project you're going to be seeing more of in the near future. I'm working on setting up a little bit of a benchmarking suite for something that I've been tinkering with for a while now. And this is one element of this benchmarking suite. So what I have here is I have a simple little Python program, which is going to calculate the number of prime numbers less than an input. In this case, I'm using 100. For the actual benchmark, it will be substantially larger than that. And this Python program is going to write, in fact, I can run it here, is going to write to standard error, the, the number of primes, so the actual answer. And then to standard output, it writes the amount of time that it took to do that. Now, the reason I did it this way is so I can run this a bunch of times. If I care about the number, so say for debugging purposes, I have it. If I don't want the number, I can get rid of it by just redirecting standard error to null like that. And by calling this program a whole bunch of times in a for loop, I can build up a big long list of these times and then say average them together. That's what this batch script does. Now what I wanted to be able to do though was both write the data to standard output so I could say pipe it into mean, right? So I can run prime tet. I can run this a hundred times and calculate the average. And I'm going to go ahead and throw away my uh, results so they don't clutter the output. So run it a hundred times, grab the average just like that. But that also is going to produce a data file for me uh, right here containing the numbers that were used to calculate that average. Here they are. So this allows me to set up simple little pipeline-y commands like this to quickly benchmark the device and get the average time, while also having the raw data file so that I can do things like graphs or other statistical analysis on the results uh, should I want to. And the way that I'm doing this is with the T command. So if we go back to our script here, you can see I am calling my Python program here and I am piping the result, piping the uh, standard output of this into T to create my file. And then of course, because the pipeline then ends, um, I can inside the script, I can then hang things off the back end of the script, uh, like what I do right here with piping it into mean and it'll just pick it right up off a of standard output, as well as putting it in this file. Of course, this tack A flag is for append. So just like with output redirection, um, if you don't tell T that you want it to append, it will delete all the data in the file. So just as an example, if I get rid of this and I run my prime test script here, I can still calculate the mean just fine. It doesn't affect standard output, however, if we take a look at the actual file that I just created, which is probably what this uh, 35 one, it only has one line in it because every time T opened the file, it deleted it. So if you want to build up a file in a loop like I'm doing here, uh, one thing to be aware of is that you are going to need to use that tack A flag for append. And that is the T command. It's very handy for doing little things like this. If you want the data in two different places, T is your friend. And of course, I believe you can put two multiple files using T as well, so you can play around with that too. I hope that you found this video interesting. Hope maybe you added a new little tool to your toolkit with using Linux. As always, I will see you in the next video.